Good day, Taos, and I have your astrological forecast for August 16th, 2013. Let's start off with Aries. You feel as if you can make progress on projects that are stalled now, but there's still a, a complicated cocktail of cosmic disturbance to manage. You may not be able to actually put your plans into action yet, but you're in a forward-thinking mode nonetheless. Watch the signs carefully today. Paying attention to your relationship dynamics ultimately helps you to get where you want to go. Now let's go ahead and look at Taurus. It may seem out of character if you overreact, but everything feels extremely important today. You want to be sure that you aren't missing anything that could negatively impact your progress, but it's possible to overcompensate in your attempt to achieve perfection. If you find your emotions growing intense, take a few steps back, which will enable you to have a healthy perspective on your life. Now let's go ahead and move on to Gemini. Now Gemini, relationships are emphasized now, but the energy between you and others probably won't be all that warm and fuzzy today. The connections can however be exciting and even adventurous, but the emotional aspect of your interactions might be temporarily regulated to the back burner. What's more important now are the activities that you undertake together. Being a good companion allows you to have your fair share of fun at work or at play. Let's go ahead and look at Cancer. Cancer, you might bring a rather unrealistic idea into your workplace today, and your solutions could be more grandiose than the problem they seek to remedy. The good news is that although you may be stressing over finding the right amount of passion to bring into your job, you still have a solid chance to strike the balance you need. Don't give up. Small steps in the right direction are better than none at all. Now let's go ahead and look at Leo. Leo, you're feeling as if you're on top of the world today, and it seems as if accomplishing anything should be as easy as just visualizing it and making a wish. Unfortunately, all your problems are not magically solved by simply thinking about them. Nevertheless, you can make progress on many fronts as long as you take a creative approach and apply your energy in a balanced manner. Now let's move on to Virgo. Virgo, it's nearly impossible for you to gauge how much it is enough today. You are pretty sure that your best strategy is to narrow your focus of vision, yet a loud inner voice tells you to widen your scope, to get the largest possible view. It is as if you are experiencing reality simultaneously through two different camera lenses. Instead of attempting to favor one perspective over the other, keep your options open for a while longer. Let's go ahead and look at Libra. Libra, you may stress about what to say and what to keep secret now, although your fantasies are more vivid than usual. It's been easier to keep them to yourself. However, your key planet, Venus, makes her yearly return to your sign today, encouraging you to relax and share more of your inner world with those you trust. There are still some things that should be left unsaid though, but don't waste too much energy worrying about it. If it feels right, smile and say what's in your heart. Let's go ahead and look at Scorpio. Scorpio, unfortunately, others might not understand the depth of your feelings now. So it's better to keep them private. You may be cleansing the wounds of an emotional battle scar, whether it's quite recent or from your childhood. Thankfully, establishing boundaries and creating a safe space gives you the room you need to honor your process. Heal quietly on your own or in the company of a trusted friend. Let's go ahead and move on to Sagittarius. You're able to get in touch with your feelings because you approach them logically today. Instead of having to sink into the deep waters of irrationality, this means having the best of both worlds now. Ironically, you could demonstrate your openness to a powerful emotions by maintaining enough detachment to talk about them in a philosophical way. A conceptual discussion gives you the freedom to explore your passions without being overwhelmed by them. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Capricorn. Capricorn, although you are unlikely to show all your cards today, you're more motivated than anyone realizes. It's not that you are specifically attempting to be secretive, it's just that you know more than others think you do. Your knowledge is your secret weapon, and you'll be better off if you hold on to this advantage for a little while longer. The future will arrive sooner than you think. Let's look at Aquarius. The call of faraway places and great adventures beckons you but you may need more time to make your great escape happen. 
On one hand, this is a magical and dreamy phase when you can put your creative nature to good use. On the other hand, you need to monitor your daydreams or they could lure you down the wrong track. Ultimately, acknowledging your long-term desires is healthy as long as you remember to also be appreciative to your current set of circumstances. Uh, now let's look at Pisces. Pisces, you're eager to take care of nearly everyone at work now that the moon is in. You're visiting 10th house of public responsibility. You have a high level of dedication and are willing to be an integral part of a team. Unfortunately, there's also so much going on in your private life today that relationships may be quite demanding. Luckily, you don't need to choose between the personal business dimension of your life. You can sustain both worlds if you simply devote your mind and heart to it. Now on to the news. Go ahead. All right. Good day, Taos, and we have your weekend edition news, but before we get started, we want to go ahead and do an announcement. We are changing our brand from what's news to the Taos Hum. Isn't that a great idea? <laughs> we also like to put out there, thank you to our sponsors, McEwen Olive Oil. You could go ahead and purchase McEwen Olive Oil at McEwen.com, along with Manzanillo Olive Trees and other products oh, nice. so uh we have uh, i want a little olive tree that'd be cool yeah i mean these are great little trees you put them in your house i mean uh, it's 100 percent manzanillo olive oil that comes with the tree and it's roughly around i think 30 dollars but cool. it's a great christmas gift or any kind of gift for that matter and let's take an olive branch and extend it to you, letting you know that uh, the ideas and opinions that we offer here on this show are simply those of our, our, our own. And in no way do they represent any of the opinions of the Town of Taos, Channel 22, or UNM Taos. All right, let's get started. RT.com reports today, hundreds of Morsi supporters torch government building in the Giza after brutal crackdown. Did you hear about this? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Egypt is on fire. Hundreds of Morsi supporters have stormed a government building in the Giza and set it afire. According to the state TV, this comes after Wednesday brutal crackdown in the Muslim Brotherhood, loyalists in which over 500 people died. It's a lot of people. I don't know. I'm hearing conflicting reports. I've heard a thousand. I've heard six hundred. Whatever. But, anyways, earlier it was reported that the MB supporters set on fire the government headquarters in Cairo. This is yet to be confirmed in Giza. A nearby four-story administrative building was torched along the side of the governor building or the governate building. People who could be seen frantically trying to escape from the top levels of the block in the area and the aid of firefighters. This is getting out of hand. I mean, we have some video. Building fires and everything. Yeah. Wow. Well, they just, uh, well, the burst of anti-government activity in the capital shortly follows a hundred strong march in Alexandria, Egypt, second largest city. Protesters have been chanting, we will come back again for the sake of our martyrs, despite the violent clearing of two protest camps on Wednesday. The march eventually turned into violent as the MB supporters clashed with local residents. At least three people were killed and 55 others sustained injuries. The Muslim Brotherhood called for marches and sit-ins to continue throughout Thursday as a show of solidarity, solidarity for previous rallies and those who were killed when security forces cleared the two main camps in the capital. The suppression prompted outcry from the international community which demanded that the violence be halted. The government declared a state of emergency and a curfew, stating that new protest camps would be not allowed. Okay. I mean, it's getting serious. That's, that, yeah, that's, that's very serious and very, very dangerous. I mean, so serious that Obama cancels joint military drill with Egypt over violence. Did you hear about this too? No. Okay, U.S. President Barack Obama has called on <laughs> joint U.S.-Egypt military drills scheduled to take place next month in protest of the Egyptian government's brutal crackdown on protests. While Obama said that U.S. had national security interests in the region, sustained commitment to Egypt, he stressed that it could not be as business as usual after the crackdown on protesters. The Bright Star military exercise has been a cornerstone of relationships between the Pentagon and the Egyptian military since it was inaugurated after the Camp David peace accord signed by the U.S. and Egypt and Israel in 1978. The 2011 exercises were canceled shortly after the ousting of President Mubarak in January of that year. Wow. So, I mean, you know, our president's reacting to this violence. The world community is going out and saying, hey, stop the violence. 
But uh, it looks like it's a real rocky future for Egypt right now. It's going to be a tough time. Yeah, let's let's hope for the best. But uh, yeah, it's dangerous. Yes, it's very dangerous. So, what do you? Speaking of dangerous things, um, the stuntman who played James Bond during the 2012 uh, Olympics in London, mm -hmm. uh, you might remember that uh, little sequence where uh, James Bond jumps yes. from, from the helicopter, yes. followed by, or uh, the, the Queen also jumps. Yes. Well, this, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, um, that the, the stuntman who was playing James Bond in that episode, that event, he fell to his death in another, um, another uh, stunt. In another uh, stunt. So he was in the Swiss Alps uh, being part of this uh, another event and uh, he, he, it didn't work out God, for him. Dangerous occupation being a stuntman. Yes, yes. Wow. God, that's a bummer. You know, here's another bummer. You hear about this uh, study saying that Facebook is actually a downer for you. It came out of uh, University of Michigan. Well, Facebook is indeed a downer. Another study suggests Facebook users in a study led by the University of Michigan wound up feeling worse about themselves after two weeks. And their moment to moment mood, mood darkened the more they browsed the social media. It didn't seem to matter how big their network was, how supportive they thought their friends were, nor why they went to Facebook in the first place. According to the study published online Wednesday, we were, and this is, and I quote, we were able to show on a moment to moment basis throughout the day how people's mood fluctuated depending on their Facebook usage, said the University of Michigan. Wow, I mean, I guess, you know, Facebooking is really bad for your mental state. <laughs> it doesn't help me very much. Well, um, do you, how many Facebook accounts do you have? Uh, I have a personal, I have a side artist's account. I uh, look over the Facebook accounts of uh, three other organizations. So, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I spend a good chunk of my day on Facebook figuring out, uh, well, wondering why am I on Facebook? Yeah, do you feel depressed <laughs> when you're on there? I haven't seen, uh, uh, I'm not medicated, <laughs> but that's... Oh, man. Well, you know, I mean, I use Facebook. I wouldn't say that I spend a whole lot of time on it, but, you know, it does. Hey, I've got a story. Okay. Uh, Tina Fey, you, she has another uh, television show in the works, and I heard on Facebook from one of my friends who was in New Facebook. York who, uh, who was hoping to be cast in it. Uh, they're hoping, he's hoping that they're actually going to shoot it in New York, just like 30 nice. Rocks. So, uh, uh, but the, uh, it's about uh, a woman's college. Hmm. That's the end of the story. Oh, man. Well, here, I have a, a story that's a little bit more serious than that. <laughs> Israeli government to recruit students as undercover agents on social media. Did you hear about this? Israeli is, Israel is set to recruit students to work undercover in covert units at universities. The students will post messages on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on Israeli's governments on the Israeli government's behalf without identifying themselves as government agents. Now see this is the bone eye, you know, okay. by using the student populace to Is bone eye more than bonus? bonus? Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the students participating in the project will be a part of the public diplomacy arm of the Prime Minister. Netanyahu's office leaders of covert units will receive full scholarship in return for their online public diplomacy. So, I mean, getting paid to Facebook and disinform, oh, that sounds like a great job. <laughs> sounds like what we're doing the, at the moment. <laughs> yeah, and the Prime Minister <laughs> office is looking to invest up to 3 million shekels, which is about $840,000, to recruit and organize and fund the activities of hundreds of university students. Hmm. I mean, uh... Couldn't they just have a flash mob and just have people show up for free? Well... Yeah, that's possible, but you know how things go viral. And you, I mean, if you look at what's going on in Egypt right now, the protesting and stuff like that, there's a lot of organization happening through these social accounts, social accounts, you know, like Twitter, Facebook. I mean, they use these mediums to um, basically do a physical flash mob and protest. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, social networks are looking kind of scary right now. Speaking of the social network, that's a video that I have uh, on my 
uh, computer at home, and I haven't watched it yet. That's the whole story for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, is that what's going on in the world that's, for today? That's, that's what I have. <laughs> Hey, why don't we move on? Okay. Okay. All right, I'm going to go do the weather. All right. And now, let's do the weather with Robert. Thanks, Enrico. And good day, Taos. I have your weather forecast for the weekend. For August 16, 2013, we have a high of 85 degrees and a low of 52 degrees. We're going to have thunderstorms in the PM. Chance of rain is 40%. Wind is coming out of the north at 8 miles per hour. Now, let's look at Saturday. We have a high of 84 degrees and a low of 52. Mostly sunny, chance of rain is gonna be 10%. Wind is coming out of the east at seven miles per hour. Now let's look at Sunday. We're gonna have a high of 84 degrees and a low of 52. Partly cloudy, chance of rain is 10%. Wind is gonna be coming out of the south-southwest at nine miles per hour. Now on to events with Enrico. Thanks, Robert. And now for some events for the weekend. This Friday, I want to let you know about Taos Pride. They're having their uh, comedy show with comedian Lucas Corvata. It's also a dance with DJ Divine. It starts at 9 p.m. and goes to 1 a.m. over at Casa Los Cordos. Also, uh, Taos Pride is continuing on Saturday from noon to 5 p.m. There'll be entertainment, vendors, food, and it's all over at Kit Carson Park. Uh, everything starts up at noon, goes till 5. Later on that evening, though, uh, you have uh, Alexiana Lee. It's a drag show over at the Alley Cantina going from 10 p.m. to 1 in the morning. So have a great weekend.